Okay, so welcome to another Feature Friday. This is part three of the application framework that we're walking through. This time we're gonna make some really simple changes to the application, um, do some saving and publishing just so you can get used to that. Uh, you'll have to wait for part four till we actually add some fields to the application. Uh, so for now, it's just be uh, some pretty simple stuff to start out with. So you really have to hunker down with your Maximo hat here and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we are logged into the application configuration application uh, running on our local uh, Docker instance there. And we're presented with the list of applications that are available on the managed server that we are also connected to. And what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate the uh, tech mobile uh, application. As you can see, I've already done this. Um, I've made a duplicate and I've called it Tech Mobile JQT and I've changed its description. And so how I did that is I just go down to the Tech Mobile line, go way over here to the right hand side, click on the three dots, click on duplicate, and you simply would add a, uh, or put in a, a new name, right, of some kind to suit your needs. You're also able to change the description as you'd like, and then you just simply click duplicate. And now you have a foundation to start working on and you're preserving the out-of-the-box application. Okay, so let's ease into this and do something simple. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my duplicate of the tech mobile application. And let's say, for example, we wanted to change the name of the tile. Um, the, how it appears in the, the main navigation. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and make that really simple change here first. Okay, so I know that the name of the tile uh, is actually down here in the menu section. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open that up and I can see that uh, line 29 is where my menu begins. And uh, the very first uh, menu item, the very first tile, uh, its label uh, is uh, by default, it's called My Schedule, and I have changed it here in uh, my version of the application to My Work. So that'd be my first very simple thing to do to be able to change the, uh, the name of those tiles. Okay, so now let's uh, change the title of a page and uh, some drop-down text as well. So we know that that type of information would be stored on a page definition. So we would roll down in the application here down to the pages section and go ahead and open that up. Now I've already changed the name of this one particular page to my work so let me show you where that's done. Go ahead and click on the page definition and it opens it up and you will see that here on line 365 there's a thing called a page controller and over on the right hand side, its title is called My Work. Okay. Now on this page, there is a drop down that we're interested in. So we're gonna go underneath the page itself and we're gonna go down to the header template section. And you will see down here a list of drop down items. Used to be My Schedule. PMs due this week, work created by me, and such. And what I've done here is I've changed the text from my schedule to my work for this particular drop-down item. If I choose the drop-down item, you will see that the component view down here at the bottom will actually render the uh, particular definition here. And it gives you a rudimentary view of what you would expect to see out in the application. Now that you've made a couple of changes, uh, you would expect to be able to save the, uh, this application definition. So that's a simple matter of, of course, if a change is made of some kind, then you will see over here in the right hand corner, that the save button has now been uh, illuminated. Okay. Uh, if you've made a mistake of some kind, let's say for example you've misspelled this particular attribute, call it uh, you know DFG, something's wrong with that, and you try to save it, okay, 
uh, it'll point out that the code is invalid. It'll point out at least the line where the uh, where the, the error is, and even if you hover, you get a little more information about that. Um, so that's handy. So basically, you cannot save this XML file if it detects that there are uh, errors in it or not. So I will just go ahead and fix that, and then, of course, I'm able to click Save. Something else that is handy is the preview button over here in the upper right hand corner, of course. And this allows you to see the entire application uh, opened up in a separate tab uh, in the browser that you're using and so that you can see your changes that, uh, that you've made. We'll give it just a moment here for it to actually retrieve some records off that system, but you're able to see the uh, drop down change that I, I made here pretty clearly. While this preview is pretty effective, it's uh, still rudimentary and certainly doesn't replace you know, actually publishing the application and uh, testing it on a, on a mobile device for real. Okay, so my time is running short here, so I need to show you how to publish and what that's all about. So once you've made your changes, once you've saved your, your files and perhaps previewed and such, um, you just go over here to the publish uh, button Click Publish, and it will take a few minutes for this to occur. Um, you'll get a bit of a status uh, here on the top of the screen uh, while the publishing process is going on. And then once it is completed, uh, it'll say Done. And then now users would be able to uh, relaunch their applications on the mobile device, and whatever changes you've made, they would then experience. And that's it. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. Uh, you can kind of come up for air just a little bit, loosen up your Maximo hat there, and uh, enjoy the, your weekend, and we'll see you next week for part four.